Hello, welcome back everybody. Hello, Jasminda. Thank you very much for directly having time again. It's a pleasure to have you on our show again because the response was quite big and that's why we thought, okay, we invite you directly again so we can talk today a, a bit more about archery and a lot, of course, again, about politics and religion and all this stuff, all you people out there like so much. I had to say that, Peter, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm and sorry. Uh, sorry if I say something, uh, maybe a lot of people or viewers don't realize that archery in many cultures is connected to religion and to politics and to to everything. So you can't you you can't cut just archery out and just talk about archery. And on the other hand, I think I would be thankful. And that's what I always say to our guests. I'm so thankful that I'm, that I'm able to learn and about other cultures and how yeah. they think and what what their habits are and their manners and so on. So they should be thankful too yeah. to get a little education when we talk about yes. different things. And especially they get an insight from, from one who lives there, not from a history book or not from the newspapers and not from media. You get information from one who lives there, who has experience, you know, who gets you one to one what is going on. First hand, first hand. For yeah. me, always more interesting than any newspaper, any book. Every yeah. That's why yeah. 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 we like you, <laughs> Jasminda. <laughs> you see? So, Jasminda. So feel free if you want to know something about our politics or religions. <laughs> yeah, trust me, you don't want you don't you don't want to know anything about Austrian politicians right now. This okay. is it's not even you can't even call them politicians anymore. It's a it's a fascistoid technocratic. I don't know how you call it. Totally like kind of uh, furious, furious. Yeah, yeah, you know that we, we had once a guy from Austria. You know, mm -hmm. politics keep on changing. So if I get some knowledge, it will change exactly. <laughs> after some time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hope for a soon change in Austria. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about archery today, enough politics. But on the other side, of course, if you want to understand a culture, archery is one part of it. You need to understand religion. You need to understand politics. You need to understand the history. Uh, that you get the, uh, the hang of it, why they did archery, maybe even this way, because even how they shoot and what they did was influenced by all these factors. So that's why it's, I think it's always interesting to know. I agree. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, it's the first time that we agree. <laughs> you see that. <laughs> this is this, this influence of India, which is so like a harmonized. Peace. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yin and yang and peaceful peace stuff. And happiness. And... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... How was your week, Jasmine? They're good since yeah, last good. podcast. Yes. Everything fine. Yes. Yes. A lot of a lot of lawyer cases you have recently. Yes, recently actually uh, after lockdown, it is uh, it is a bit slow. The courts have started mm -hmm. working in physic with physical appearance. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. earlier it was uh, on online appearance was there and. Uh, now it has gradually it has started taking mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and taking uh, momentum. <clears throat> are you more into crime cases or uh, or, or, or 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 how is it called uh, oh, civil civil yeah. and criminal yeah i i take i am in both both i practice uh, uh, okay so one is more that that it means Tradition cases and the other are criminal cases, or how is it called? Yes, the uh, in civil cases there are. Yeah, civil cases. cases. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is that is regarding the recoveries or uh, such kind of consumer cases. Mm -hmm. There are mm -hmm. these are mm -hmm. these all are in, comes into civil, and the other one regarding the violence or harassment like that. Uh, Mm -hmm. abusing uh, uh, murder rape etc those, those come in criminals okay. uh, sometimes we read kind of horror stories from india and maybe also from pakistan uh, 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 about raping girls group rapings and so on is this a big big thing in india 
no oh, actually uh, sometimes there there is some incidents that cannot be avoided and mm-hmm. it happens and uh, it is unfortunate it happens yeah, but yeah. it is it is not that that uh, it's happening everywhere and every time mm-hmm. but okay, it, okay. it depends upon seldom incidents mm-hmm. that is propagated by media and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it goes on and then <clears> the <throat> people uh, try to make an image of like that that it's happening of course, very yeah. very much after all india pakistan they are both very uh, populated countries mm. when there is a mm. lot of population even uh, when if two three incidents also happens it looks like that it's happening yeah, very much. yeah 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 if, and, and peter if you want to see it organized you need to go to america you know to jeffrey epstein's island yeah. and then you know what's yeah, going on yeah, there yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but but i don't know if it's true uh it is kind of connected with the kind of caste system that is a social thing that some the guys are raping lower caste girls or so is it connected to somehow to that social no, actually thing? no no actually what we say all girls are daughters our daughters okay we have uh, mothers daughters they all are common for us right we don't the people who are not educated that they have no values mm-hmm. they have criminal mind Mm, criminal yeah. mind can be anywhere 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 in the world exactly the person yeah, who is yeah, having yeah. a criminal mind mm. they will do criminal acts yeah yeah of course so that is uh, in every society such people exist not over yeah, not exactly. only in india in yeah. other countries also in every course, society it depends, upon, uh, and, it depends and, upon how you become vocal against mm. them how you have to be vocal against them so now yeah, yeah. if something is, was in backstage it is coming in front of uh, of the society people are fighting against it so earlier it was something was covered and now their people are raising voice against them they are coming on the roads they are on streets so mm-hmm. due to that that they are getting propagated mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and are there uh, how is the justice system are there high uh, punishments for for crimes or is it just here around it's very you know kind of holiday when you go to jail no no it's not like here like that yeah. not holiday jails <laughs> jail means jail <laughs> okay, people okay. people people cry when they want to come out from jail yes mm, we want okay, to come okay. Out. okay 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 and and to clear that out i'm sorry and i excuse i don't like to say this thing about indian people or so it's just because we have it in the newspapers and so i yeah. wanted to ask you about it it's of course it's in every culture it is possible and it happens no question yeah. about that yep mm-hmm. okay okay shall we start with archery now oh i'm sorry yeah. <laughs> yeah you know this is a it's still a bow and arrow related some kind of you know sometimes we should talk about i saw that you did a review i didn't watch the review yet of this one piece you know this this crooked bow from flagella day what do you think of it in in one sentence uh, marvelous <laughs> <laughs> what you really i didn't like it it's nice to look at and nice to hang yeah. on the wall but actually, when you shoot it it's actually, like i don't know actually uh i i never had that i never tried that bow earlier yeah okay. i i actually i was very much when uh waiting for a Osage orange wood. I haven't seen it mm-hmm. earlier. Okay. So uh, in India we don't have that wood. So mm-hmm. so Flagella Day even sent it to me, oh, nice. and I was really very happy that and the way it was made, that was uh, very much interesting. That <laughs> mounted mounted kind of and snaky design that I like. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, to look at they are nice. I uh, I had one too. Yeah. Mm. So and it it was so simple and. Uh, Uh, yeah i think it it was uh, it was comfortable to draw and it was giving a good penetration mm-hmm. into the target also no yeah, yeah yeah it's not so bad but you said you so you don't have osage orange which wood or what materials did they use in 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 ancient times for their bows in india i mean we know this mughal bow but this is uh, as we heard last time you're not really an indian uh, development bamboo. 
bamboo was very much used bamboo okay and there was mulberry mm -hmm. but did you make these these uh, kind of with sears or simply as long bows or re what recurves or what was the style i just team bended it and with the sears mm. at the at the part of sears mm -hmm. but in india i haven't uh, earlier uh, except mughal bow i haven't seen that in any museum that siyas were specially connected and made like that mm -hmm. uh, it 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 it, should, it it would have been a single bow only mm -hmm. <clears throat> i think that's very natural because if you if you like a tribe living in the jungles you will make your kind of uh, straight self bow and you're able to hunt yeah. on and to so, shoot yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah oh <laughs> uh -oh. so so the people can talk uh, bad about me i have one question more mm -hmm. for jasminda because we talk about archery mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. battle and warfare and something mm -hmm. so is there in india any legend or any story of female warriors yes there are many many no <laughs> <laughs> he, he doesn't like this idea of female warriors <laughs> So the men Imagine. stayed at so the men stayed at home and did cooking and sewing and the women go to war. No, or, all, or how? Or how all, was it? I think everybody who was capable of fighting was sent to war. Not every female is made for breeding, I guess. Yeah, true. <laughs> that is correctly said by Armin. <laughs> some some are protected from breeding because they are ugly. <laughs> you send them to war. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. See, yes, more people. <laughs> so, oh, now I believe in female warriors. See, they, yeah, yeah. they send them the ugly ones, and they and they they talking all day long. They send <laughs> to war <laughs> because they don't need it. Bow and arrow. You send one female to the enemy lines, and she talks them until they are. Oh my god we can't listen let's go home yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's psychological warfare, psychological warfare. <laughs> just sent the women over <laughs> they didn't even have to learn any weapon for me look yeah. at this. they just start they have to start to talk <laughs> exactly oh we are mean to them see, anyway. we are bad bad macho no, guys just mean that you see. Yeah. No, i i i believe in female warriors and i always did when we had this talk with petra engelander she She's, oh, yeah. you know, she represents this female warriorship. And then Peter always, yeah, yeah, but there are no real female warriors. And then even in Japan, we heard that there were female warriors. And we yeah, heard yeah, in... Sing, single ones, single yeah. cases, but not, yeah. not a kind of tri like the Amazons, not the tribe of female warriors. Uh, that's not true. A tribe, maybe. Do you, yes. have, do you have also female warriors in your country? We had, uh, you know, that old sagas from the from the Northmen and the Vikings and so on. And there were female warriors. They were called Valkyries, like mm -hmm. that Richard Wagner's Valkyrie, Valkyrie. Mm -hmm. and so on. And these were kind of female warriors, but they were they were religious features. The 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 Valkyries they were in Valhalla and they welcomed the the foreign heroes mm -hmm. so they when they died on the battlefield the valkyries picked them up and brought them to valhalla mm -hmm. where there's a big party going on every night and every day there's a battle so what men like to do to drink and to fight it's in eternity mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was the idea of the germans and the vikings and so about the afterlife or the afterworld. Mm -hmm. When they die in battle, they came to Valhalla, to the other heroes, and they just Valhalla eat. means your uh, that uh, heaven. Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, it was. Uh, their god was Wodan or Odin, mm -hmm. and he had a, has a big hall, a big, big, big hall, and this was this Valhalla. The roof was made of spear shafts. And all it was surrounded with weaponry and big horns with <laughs> beer and stuff they drank and Meat. and they mm. yeah and the Valkyries were around and every night they parted and mm -hmm. every day they fought another battle mm -hmm. and every night they went back to the Valhalla and of course this is the, the yeah. spiritual reinforcement for the real men on battlefield yeah. 
because yeah. even they in in the in the another dimension were fighting the battle with them. Yeah. And there are wonderful pictures of these Valkyries with their how is uh, that Schuppenpanzer, how is it called? Uh, the, the Lamello, the, I forgot. The, the scale, the, scale armory, scale you scale know, armory. shiny scale armories and mm. big spears and shields mm -hmm. and so. Mm -hmm. And long blonde hair, of course. Yeah, yeah. but not real mm. female warriors. This is more the, the saga of the, when you go to Valhalla. Yeah. So did yeah. you have some, yeah. some female warriors in Europe? Yeah, and, and for example, this television serial, The Vikings, where had they had these shield maidens, these female warriors, mm -hmm. they were kind of connected to the Valkyrie mm -hmm. legend. Yeah. Like Zina. Pardon? Like Zina. Zina, yeah, 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 yeah. Zina, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 You yes, have that. Nice chakra. Yeah, you have that yes, serial? Yes. yes, I have seen that serial. <laughs> Uh, very, very uh, muscular lady. <laughs> but you know, we had Wonder Woman too. No, yes, right. Yes. Wonder Woman, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> the marvels. And, <laughs> and of course, it's it's true in the present or or in the world World War Two, the Russians had a lot of female soldiers. The mm -hmm. communists, the Soviets, had female. Yeah warriors so to say mm -hmm. yeah but they are they are soldiers not warriors so i i, yeah. I like to always differ i differentiate between yeah. warriors and soldiers yeah. yeah yeah soldiers simply you tell the soldier you go there and whatever you shoot whatever moves you do it and the warrior is fighting for something and it's know, a free what man what he believes, not is, the, yeah. what he believes is right hmm? soldiers follow the orders exactly yeah. Uh, and uh, how about your female warriors, Jasminder? What is the Indian story about? Yes, there were many female warriors. There were queens, female, uh, the queens, they were very much good in weaponry. Uh, they were, in fact, if you will see the certain movies also, you will find many things mm -hmm. in Indian mm -hmm. movies and, and Indian history also. Uh, <clears throat> in fact, in, uh, in the last podcast with we were talking about 1857. The mm -hmm. main lady called Rani Lakshmi Bai. She was the main warrior, one of the main warriors. Mm -hmm. But and then mean, there, there, there has been Razia Sultan, Rani Chinnamma, Mai Pago from Punjab. There were there are many uh, names that I can really mm -hmm. say about mm -hmm. Indian, Indian ladies who are warriors. In okay. fact, our our one of the deities. There, she uh, is worshipped as uh, Ma Durga Mata and Kali Mata. There are many uh, mm -hmm. uh, warrior uh, deities also. Okay, so, but but uh, I, I sometimes I think like that. I say, uh, were they some of them were they real warriors or did they just lead their troops to battle? No, no, so no. They fight they with their really troops. fighting. They fight with their troops. They lead the troops. They okay. Have, okay. Yes. Really, in the battlefield, they have mm. fought on horse. Okay. With, okay. On nice. horses. Yes. Nice. They used to force on horses. Mm -hmm. nice. Properly Great. with proper weapon and mm -hmm. uh, everything. What is required yeah. in the war? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the basic idea of, of Peter is that the female, because they can reproduce. They need to be not at the battlefield because you always need to make sure that your race will survive. So that's why you bring the female somewhere in a safe place. They can reproduce. They can bring birth to new. Um, yeah, I mean, let me interrupt you. You're yeah. right, but in this case, was Jasmine is telling us is it was one female mm -hmm. leading a troop of yeah, of men of yeah. male warriors. Yes. If I get it right, mm -hmm. it was not a troop of female warriors fighting she she was she was having the, her own female troop also okay really yes 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 mm -hmm. it, it is okay. it, it she was uh, a queen of jhansi jhansi is a uh, small uh, place in india and uh, there is there was a big fort there was a fort also there is a fort also mm -hmm. so uh, it she fought against britishers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and so in this 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 fighting women were unmarried or or how or their husbands also fought in this battle and and the females so also or how not, her, her, her husband died before the battle began mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so she has to fought for her she became the queen and she has to fought for uh, her uh, her that place Jansi and mm -hmm. virtually uh, during the uh, complete uh, freedom struggle, she was the one of the main fight, uh, warrior of the freedom mm -hmm. struggle. Mm -hmm. First freedom struggle from India. Okay. Earlier mm -hmm. in South India, uh, there was a queen named Rani Chinnamma. She is uh, she was a real warrior and she fought with Britishers in a very early time and she defeated them at least I think. Two three times she defeated Britishers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow! Mm -hmm. right. So there, there are certain many examples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Punjab, there was there was Mai Bhako. She uh, she also fought with uh, Afghans and Mughals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we change your your point of of his uh, Peter. You change now a bit I and mean, open I, up I, a bit I, to this idea. I never doubt that uh, that uh, single out incidents or single yeah. women fighting yeah. with with other, with with uh, mm. in, in 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 connection with male female, mm -hmm. uh, male warriors and so on. But mm -hmm. there, there's no doubt about it. And mm -hmm. so I believe in that, but I don't believe in a kind of female warrior cultures. Mm -hmm. And that's what Petra wants to tell mm -hmm. us. That is, yeah. No, we need she's to a kind of me. she's a kind of feminist. I know. <laughs> she simply likes to bring out this this natural out of the the female again when they start horse riding with her and shooting bow and arrow that they connect again to this ancient feeling of female warriors. And I think it's not yeah. a bad thing. If it's half a myth, I mean, or every myth or every legend has always something truth in it uh, and still, but if it helps women to get a bit more self-confident and they can stand their ground, I think it's never a bad thing. But 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 who will cook and clean the dishes and, and taking care hey, for the babies? Look, it is, I can choose here. I have Volt and Bolt on it. I have all restaurants around me and I let them cook and they deliver and it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you need to go with time. Yeah. <laughs> just mean that I mean is reducing the females just to sex objects because I they don't need to that. cook. I, I they don't need that, to no. cook. They don't need to clean. They just, he just likes them for his amusement. See, this is now his assumption, <laughs> you know, because I am a very, I'm a gentleman and this is his assumption. See, this is what you get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Let's talk about archery. Oh, really? Shall we start now? <laughs> hey, who shot the first arrow in India? That's a good question, actually. <laughs> who was the first archer in India? First archer? Yeah. First known archer something. If I talk about uh, very ancient times, uh, there is uh, Ma Maharishi Parshuram. Mm hmm who, who has got knowledge first, he was the first human to mm -hmm. got to get knowledge of Dhanurveda mm -hmm. from Devas, from okay. gods. Yeah. Okay. So he is the main guru of uh, the mentor of all the holy sages who further teach, who taught other people about archery. Mm -hmm. So he, if we say that First human who know about archery is Parshuram, mm -hmm. and he got his knowledge from this from the from this divas. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Nice. See, interesting story. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm not sure if I read this right, but it said in Daniel Vidya that they first when they learn archery, they learn with their wrong hand to shoot yes. with bow and arrow until they perfection it when I'm a right-handed archer, so I shoot left-handed until I can do it properly. And then you swap to the to the correct hand and you can shoot instantly. If you learn with your normal hand, I'm a right-handed archer, if the bow in the left hand, I can do this. And now I switch to my 
other hand, and then it takes again a time until I get it. And they simply turn this around and let you first train with your wrong hand and then instantly you could do it with the right hand. The archer who learned, who can shoot from both hands, yeah. he's called Sab Sabya Sachi. Mm -hmm. He's called Sabya Sachi, ambidextrous. Mm -hmm. okay. ambidextrous. okay. So uh, logic behind learning from both hands was not that uh, one has to be ambidextrous. It is about the direction from if a target is coming from this side. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which uh, arm you have to use, you will not use the other one. Or exactly. if the target is coming, running from here, mm -hmm. so you are not doing, you are taking this and you are. Yeah, you can't turn around. Yeah, exactly. So when you are using your both hand, you can use on both mm -hmm. directions. Mm -hmm. This is the logic and reason behind learning yeah. both. This is what I always uh, assume too. That's why I said, uh, especially the horseback archers, they sit on horseback. If the enemy comes from the front, it's okay. From this side, it's okay. From back, it's okay. But when he comes from here, he needs to swap bow hands. But then there are in some Chinese archery Facebook groups, are these guys that say, no, no, they had then special or whatever. Left-handed archers on the other side of the... tactics were like this, that they only shoot in this direction and all in the no. other. And so I don't know. I think you are a better archer if you can shoot both-handed. Yes. And, that's, and I read, I don't know where, uh, that I don't know in which culture they had left-handed archers on the right side of the... Mm of the troops so yeah. they could be able to shoot to the right and mm -hmm. the right and to the left and so yeah, yeah, yeah. also mm. makes sense but if you say this is in that how, how is that book that indian book called Dhanurveda. Dhanurveda. almost uh, like this yeah this is Dhanurveda Dhanurveda Dhanurveda. Here. Yeah. yeah but the, the uh, original one is a little different i guess <laughs> and, and i mean and, and i talked before about it uh when i have my archery students and and they then they say, Oh, I can't do it, it's so hard to learn mm. this and so it is very it is very easy to learn from left hand. If yeah. you are a right yes. hander, yeah. then I let them shoot left handed yeah. some shots, and then when they switch back to right hand, they say, Oh, now yeah. it's better, it's yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 And moreover, moreover, your dominant eye also take uh, mm. you can uh, that is also very much required in there. Because yeah. you have to use both hands, so you exactly. have to learn about your dominant. You need to, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I had this once in in a course in Germany in, in in near Ravensburg. It was an archery instructor, but he shoots only three fingers Mediterranean. And I said the first twenty minutes we did a thumb release course. I said the first twenty minutes we don't use any protection because I want you to feel the string, and we only shot easy poundages, so it was not a problem. But then after fifteen minutes, he came and he had a bloody blister here. So he couldn't shoot anymore. I said, you know what? You shoot now left-handed. And then he shot left hand better than he ever shot right hand. So it was interesting to see he swapped and it was easy. So it's it's simply a mental thing. You opened his chakra. Yeah, of course. I, I'm good in this. I, I'm, I'm good in opening. You opened his archery chakra. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, I mean, it's, it's like it with every weapon, even a sword, you should be capable to, to you use it both-handed. To, to a certain degree. So, yes, so you are least. not helpless if you have to change. Exactly. If, if my right take... hand is injured, I still should be yeah. able to, to wield my sword. So, yeah, 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 of yeah. course. Yeah. Yeah. And for archery, it was always for me the, the fourth direction. In this direction, I can cover here three directions, but this one is not working, so I need to swap. Oh, and, and you you <laughs> can when we talk about warfare or so or, or battle you can surprise your enemy with that because you know i did seven year long i did boxing mm -hmm. and if you are able to change mm -hmm. from right hand yep. to left hand in boxing yeah, yeah. your Confusing. your opponent is totally mm -hmm. confused they don't know yeah. what is going on now mm. Even if you can't do it, if you just pose like that and yeah. do some, some you, jabs you just, or so, you distract will, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, makes sense. But yeah. tell a warrior, you know, tell a sick warrior. <laughs> there was a very famous boxer. His name was Rocky Marciano. He was world yeah. champion, and he was an Italian living in America. And his, I think, his uncle lost his right arm mm -hmm. in war, and so he taught this young Rocky Marciano. You know. 
learn everything two-handed ambidextrous mm -hmm. so you if you lose one arm you're not helpless yeah. and he trained this from a and he he was able to change mm -hmm. during a, a fight a boxing yeah. fight and mm -hmm. so he could knock out everywhere everyone mm -hmm. nice yep good so and then first you start with your wrong hand and then you use a right hand, but you use even, I, I don't know how many, six, seven different draw techniques, right? You have from yes. pinch draw to the supported draw to thumb to three finger. Uh, why? Why? Because <laughs> uh, each and uh, what if I say about my personal, uh, my personal prospect, mm -hmm. a person, an archer should be comfortable he is he is free to use what kind of draw he chooses mm -hmm. if he is comfortable with his draw technique then he can do better archery mm -hmm. number one now yeah. according to dhanurveda there are different kind of targets mm -hmm. so different kind of you can uh, if you know the draw techniques you can use uh, you can hit those kind of targets with those kind of draws if you know mm -hmm. different targets. Uh, they are specialized for uh, different things like uh, uh, pataka mushti first draw it is for uh, using majra mm -hmm. yes. majra means uh, that funnel to be uh, for short short arrows mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that is uh, that draw is for meant for that some draws are meant for uh, without without knock the, mm -hmm. uh, the arrows having no knocks you can okay. use those draw. if you don't mm -hmm. if you don't have knock you can if you and you know the technique of drawing the, you can use the arrows mm -hmm. without knock, without knock also yep. so uh, there are and some tech uh, some draws are uh, for heavy uh, heavy poundage bows mm -hmm. some yep. draws are for heavy arrows how to use heavy arrows so okay. these all these are and some uh, one draw is for hitting only a normal target mm -hmm. you don't need to draw other other kind of uh, no need to use other kind of draws mm -hmm. so all draws are uh, made for some reason mm -hmm. they are basic draws you can make some changes in them and you can uh, so that you uh, an archer should be comfortable yeah. with the draw he how to draw his bow properly mm -hmm. how to draw okay. a string of so course this, first you learn the style and then you make it your own mm -hmm. Uh, there is there is basic draw you have uh, and then you can change if you think that i need two fingers or mm -hmm. i need three fingers to draw this string mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. according to the poundage i can do that there is no restriction no you are doing okay. wrong this mm -hmm. is not like that <laughs> it is not like that mm -hmm. okay. i have seen some people who are saying that uh, uh, that uh, this is this boy you are using turkish bow with three finger mm -hmm. okay why why can't mm -hmm. i it is an ancient draw it is yeah. it is it is mentioned uh, in our uh, uh, our culture yeah. three finger draw is, is uh, from india it 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 has been used earlier also yeah from mahabharata's time mm. so you cannot say that it is a modern draw yeah. it should not be used by uh, uh, three finger you should not use I have with, no uh, idea how many uh, comments I got this can when I, I shoot a Turkish I, I, bow and I show that you can shoot it three fingers and then, oh, you shoot it wrong. You can't shoot it like this. You need to shoot it with thumb release. And then I shoot with thumb release, but I don't use a, a thumb ring. And I said, no, you can't shoot like this. You need to use a thumb ring. I said, look, I can do it without two. So, but there are some, they are a bit narrow-minded and they only know one thing. And this is for and them, the whole universe. The, the archery and Nazis. Archer should, be, yeah. archer should be comfortable. Exactly. All, yeah. And if, if you are comfortable to shoot a bow as per your wish and you know the draw or technique, then he will hit the target if he will, uh, he will uh, think that, yeah, my draw is not coming good. I should do try like this. Mm -hmm. uh, no, this has to be done. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's, he, then discomfort comes. Yeah, exactly. But, and with, with comfort comes confidence and you, you are simply yeah. a better, better archer. Of yeah. course. Um, uh, I understand what you're saying, Jasminda, but <clears throat> I don't know. It's my opinion. It sounds kind of confusing if you can use a lot of different techniques. Right. So if you stay with one technique, 
no, no matter what technique, three fingers, yeah, yeah. thumb, or so. But uh, or, or, or did I got you wrong? Because I understand it that way that you change your shooting, your your draw, uh, depending on what uh, what you are going for, or no, or you stay is, with one kind of then, draw and and. And no, the Norveda teaches the lesson. It is a textbook. It is a book. Yeah. When 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 we are learning a subject, then we have to take all kind of lesson. Mm -hmm. But we have to adopt one thing or two things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So don't change to every style, but knowledge one is, or yes, two. Knowledge. Knowledge is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But but you have to adopt one thing or yeah. two thing. What whatever. Which you feel comfortable in. I understand. Yeah. Okay. So First, you choose you one or two. Every, and you learn every, every technique and then you decide which one works for you. Yeah. There, is, there, yeah. there are options. That is not only one thing. There. Yeah. 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 You, okay. you are following that thing only. Not, not only options. one religion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and what's your preferred draw technique, Jasminda? Uh, I, uh, I draw three fingers. Three fingers. And, okay. and uh, one is Singkaran Mushti. Thing, uh, thumb draw also. Thumb draw. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he doesn't <laughs> like that. He doesn't like us <laughs> as thumb shooters. No, it's nice. So. No, it's interesting. Okay. Yeah, you yeah. Know, when you see them, all this I have them here. You know, this is the first. You know, this is the pinch draw, where you can shoot even knockless arrows, and then you have their kind of thumb draw. I do have also this. <laughs> yeah. But what I see here is that the arrow is relatively high up on the hand. I have the so, arrow under this knuckle, so but it's a little different. So it's a little different. And then you have this, you know, all these these different kind of draws there. It's it's, it's really interesting. Yeah, I, I came prepared today, just mean that you know. Yes. And a one a very interesting one. I tried it once, I didn't like it completely, is this one. Sir, so this is uh, the index. This is, sir, sir, please, uh, this is wrongly mentioned, sir. Okay. It's a Kal uh, as a name. Kakatundi. 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 Exactly. And what is wrong there? Sir, it is not practical possible. Okay. <laughs> they they say you shoot there on 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 a, on a big target when you shoot like this. Uh, uh, sir, oh. it is not it is not like that. It is shown like that because. Uh, some interpretation is mm -hmm. missing. Okay. Uh, uh, this, this while, you, I, while I have you here, okay, then show us first. Good. Oh, look, he has a nice bow. What bow is that? Simsek. Simsek. Oh, Simsek. <laughs> Only the best, eh? Of course. <laughs> Looks great. Looks good. Uh, means Kakatundi means crow's beak. Mm -hmm. Crow speak exactly. It's what yes. is here in German. Crow, yeah. uh, there's crow, just like crow has uh, beak like this, mm -hmm. lower one here and upper one is okay like this. Okay, mm -hmm. so it is like that. So with which finger you draw? Then with the index finger. So it's like a bit like a pinch draw, only you you come it a is, little. It is it is a pinch draw. But you go a little with the fingers around the string. Yes, because yeah. it is not it is not like that. Okay. We are not. This is not a trigger thing. But you but you know this is from from Hendrik Vitas's book here. So what he's so what. <laughs> yo, yo, something, yo, yo. Some, something is to be corrected. Okay. Something is to be corrected. It mm -hmm. is not possible to do like this yeah it, it feels i tried it because i did a video about this draw techniques and i tried this and it feels completely <laughs> you have no feeling of anything it's it's since, since vitas invented that style of draw it's common in india no no, no, <laughs> it, it, no, no sir it is not it is not his fault let me tell you yeah. reason is that uh, some interpretations from mm -hmm. sanskrit to english or hindi mm -hmm. they they goes wrong until okay. unless you know Sanskrit properly, yeah, yeah, yeah. or or secondly, the interpreter who is uh, translating that mm -hmm. he is an archer, he should know that logically whether that is possible or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. So but these translators, archer. these translators yes. were not archers, so that's why. Yes. So mm -hmm. if if I know Sanskrit, or I learned what 
actually the draw is saying mm -hmm. then i then i can see whether it is possible or but not this one i need to try you can shoot even knock less arrows like this right it's like this pinch draw it's cool be careful that you don't look at you <laughs> be careful where you point your arrow <laughs> Not your wife sits there and <laughs> nobody's there. <laughs> and, and what I saw, I, I mean, it's not a crit, it's only that I understand it. When you see the three finger draw, yes, then only the middle finger, mm -hmm. the string is only in the first crease of the middle finger, and the other two fingers are on the finger tips, kind of like. Or do you have all three fingers in the crease? Three fingers, one over the over here. Mm -hmm. Only these tips are to be used. Yep. But the only tips, or you, or you go, you go in the first crease, or you use the fingertips. No, 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 fingertips only. Fingertips. Because For reason, reason behind is that because if you will do like this, it will uh, roll the string. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the rolling is to be avoided. Mm -hmm. And you can just mm. hold on and. And, and what um, what is wrong with rolling the string, sir? It it will roll down when you yeah. pull it. And, and what's the problem? What's the problem with rolling the string, sir? Then it will it, it will affect the arrow flight. Okay, okay, mm. okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And okay. The... Okay. Yes. Good. Oh, so it's all okay. Fine. And I'm rolling the string on purpose. Mm. I'm kind of of. Then there, there, there is to stick press. Off the string also. I'm, uh, <laughs> you know, if you roll the string like that with Western style of shooting, then you are also able to put the bow uh, so the arrow is under the bow and the, the arrow won't fall off for kind of show shooting and so on. So I don't know. But how is it then with thumb release? Because with the thumb release, you have the string relatively far behind. So there the string rolls around the thumb, right? Or not? Yes. But it, will, it, is, it is when it is released. It, it is not rolled, I don't think. Okay. It it's only, like only one finger, not three fingers, and it's most probably yes. goes yes. faster. It, it is, we are releasing this. Mm -hmm. Where is the rolling? Mm -hmm. we, are, okay. we are to avoid that roll. Mm -hmm. We are to. Mm -hmm. That's but if sorry, but if you do it every time, so mm -hmm. it won't matter because it 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 it, yeah. it, it uh, infects or the arrow flight, but it's always the same way, so mm -hmm. it wouldn't matter, no. Yeah, I, I prefer to have the the string in these creases because then my yeah. hand is relaxed. I have a yeah. complete relaxed hand, a relaxed and I go here and I let go. If I put it in, in on the fingertips, then my whole hand is tense. And then my release is different. This, this fingertip th thing, in my opinion, comes from the Olympic, from the target style archers. Back then, they teach this like that. Okay. But you have, even with a heavy bow, you have more control if you have it in the first groove, in my opinion. Actually, when the... When the uh... People start archery, they and they start this finger. They use this this mm -hmm. technique only. Yeah. But okay. but it, but somewhere it is not. Uh, it will not become comfortable mm -hmm. if you are using if you are using uh, finger tab. Then mm -hmm. you can use this thing. Then it's okay. Then okay. you because mm -hmm. then then it then it goes like that. But when we are using glove or bare finger, then I prefer that it should be on the fingertips. Yes. Yeah. I figure that it's more painful, more uncomfortable when I shoot from the fingertips than when I have it in this first crease. But it's me because my finger is relaxed and then I let go. This is all tense and it, it I don't know, it's different for me. But I'm not used to it. I will, I will try that. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. in, uh, with my style of shooting, the whole hand kind is kind of relaxed. Just yeah. these tips yeah. here are holding mm -hmm. and this. This all surface is kind of relaxed. I need, I need to try if my release is different. Mine I should bed in any way, so that's why it doesn't matter. But, but everything I... also goes with breathe technique also. Okay, how do you breathe when you shoot? Tell me. Yeah, sir, when, when I shoot, it is like that I'm inhaling. Yeah. And inhaling then really at the when it when it is released after releasing. Mm -hmm. I exhale. Okay. 
you stop breathing so inhale and then you stop breathing or you it's one rhythm it is a rhythm it becomes it now my body is like that only it is just like i'm uh, so you, you the, inhale uh, while you draw and after and releasing i exhale you let go and then you exhale let, it is only two three seconds, so there is no harm in uh, of course holding holding a breath. Or it is a uh, ongoing uh, procedure, so it mm -hmm. my body has like that adopted like that. Mm -hmm. and, you uh, may say that habit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Of course, uh, a question, Jasmine. The because just last week a, a guy from Vienna called me. He read Byron Ferguson's book, and and I think I wrote about breathing. Bad thing you don't think about it. So you will do it automatically mm. the right way. So my question is, do you think about breathing, Jasmine? Do you think during the shot about how to breathe? No. No, it it it, it happens automatically. It's naturally, no? Yeah, it, but it is naturally. If you, naturally uh, yeah. But but what we when we learned R3, when we started, we started like that. Mm -hmm. So it becomes, that become our uh, that becomes our a uh, part of our nature. It's, it's, it's same, like I just wanted to say when you when you when you learn Tai Chi, breathing is an important part. And so when you when you come back, you inhale. When you go forward, you exhale. You know. That's yeah, what, but, uh, but in, yeah. In, in one moment you simply know it, and I don't have to think about my breathing. It works simply. Uh, yeah, I mean I agree with Tai Chi on that point with you yeah. because. You haven't that you haven't a bow. You build up pressure and then you release and so on. I think even if you don't teach it to mm. your your students, they will do it uh, by na naturally. Because naturally, you, let me I think tell you, sir, so. In, in so. Veda, in Dhanurveda also breathing technique, what we call is connected with yoga. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. the, uh, so uh, the Dhanurveda is also connected with yoga. Mm -hmm. There yeah. are there are certain things. With breathing techniques by yeah. which you can pull heavy weight bows also that is mm -hmm. called kumbak or kumba mm -hmm. so so the, you you have seen martial artists they uh, do uh, sit ups with their fingers mm -hmm. or knuckles on their knuckles yeah. so that is they they breathe like that mm -hmm. they, they also do use a certain amount of that technique yeah. so it it is it is there the breathing has mm -hmm. a has some influence on the I think so too. I mean, when you see the Japanese, the Kyoto archers, they have a very specific breathing cycle. So they, when they raise the bow, they inhale. And when they start pulling and pushing, they exhale, 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 exhale. They release and they still exhale. But with this pressure on, on, on your diaphragm, on. With, like you push a heavy weight. And this is how I like to shoot, but it works for me. I always say but try if, different if, things. If you, uh, I, when this guy on the telephone asked me how I breathe mm -hmm. while shooting, yeah. I had to to to, to do it to, to check <laughs> it how I, because yeah. I don't know. Yeah, of course, it becomes second nature. Of course, you don't think about it. Yeah. In, 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 you never think about any of these things. One technique is also there, like that they fulfill their stomach with full uh, air, yeah. mm -hmm. and and then they then they release after that they. Uh, become normal. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's different. What what I saw when people start shooting and you don't tell them anything about breathing, some think then like with gun shooting, then they come to full draw, they inhale and then they release a bit, pssst, and then they stop again, like when you shoot the gun or something, and then they release and then pew, and they let go, but then they collapse the whole shot. So that's why breathing for me. In the teaching is important that you at least know how or two, three different ways, and then you find the way which works for you. But I would not leave it untaught. Even, even, uh, even otherwise, if you are running, if you are running, yeah. and then you stop, you have to shoot your arrow, then yeah. your breathing style is different. Then you have to, yeah. if you know, if, you, if your body is, uh, uh, is adopted your breathing style, then it will not make any difference. But exactly. if you don't yeah. know, the breathing yep. style, what your breathing style is then mm. after running you will just get confused and yeah, exhausted yeah, yeah. Not yeah. now your heart, heart will race and whatever yeah. 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 But, but you know uh, i had about i don't know three thousand clients or so mm -hmm. when i did archery schools yeah. and i always say i don't tell them 
uh, more than they have to know because it's so confusing if you say put the arrow like that and then you breathe like that and then yeah. you do this and that so it's, it's too much not in so, not in beginner classes not in, yeah. not in, be not in beginner in, class you yeah, yeah. simply get them because going I and hit the target yeah, yeah. because yeah. i think it, 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 it comes it, it, naturally it is an advanced level it is it this is, is a advanced, advanced level, level. Oh, i understand yeah then you have an advanced course or an intermediate course and there you teach them about breathing and about the more fine details but of course yeah it's, yeah, yeah okay it's, otherwise it's too much of course yeah only yeah. Seri only only serious artists uh, go there at, at that level <laughs> exactly yeah but then you have many they come from a martial art and they want to learn it in this way they want to learn the proper stance and then the proper structure and everything so then it's it's nice to know that's why i think i think uh, 90% or more will do it naturally when they are shooting. They will get into a kind of breathing system. Yeah. And instinctive archery. Uh, uh, not instinctive, but on the other hand, turn it around. Say, so what kind of breathing is wrong? So there's no kind yeah. of breathing wrong to archery. If you feel comfortable uh, breathing in or, or exhaling or mm. what you like to do if you do it always the same and and it's okay for you so there's no problem i would say when you breathe in and as long as you don't hunch up your shoulders while you breathe in this is yeah. what happens mostly they breathe in and then they stand there and the shoulders are up there and yeah. then they try yeah. to shoot yeah. and it's yeah. not yeah. going yeah. to work yeah. anymore that's why i think breathing, it's important uh, to influence your body breathing yeah. is not should not influence your stance and body. exactly that's why and, and nowadays people have no idea how to breathe anymore and i i would say that so they I, would die so they would die if no, they don't they, know they, they how breathe, to breathe but they don't breathe correctly they, oh, don't, yeah. use, they don't use a diaphragm and the, most people only breathe in their chest, in their chest not in the belly which is in my opinion wrong so you should breathe in the belly because this is what you learn when you do tai chi or martial arts because you use yeah. the whole lung capacity or not only this part up there it's way more efficient and i i would say that 90 percent of the people don't know how to breathe properly nowadays anymore that's why for me breathing is a very an aspect in intermediate advanced teaching but it's me <laughs> it just means only twice. <laughs> Good. Hey, so you're, es now, you're esoteric, guys. <laughs> no, it's, it's, and I'm, I, listening, I'm listening to the masters. <laughs> it's simply what works for me, and I don't like to stop breathing. So I don't like to stop breathing. And but of course, on the other side, you have now all these speed shooters. For them, this breathing cycle doesn't even work anymore because when I inhale, exhale, exhale, shoot, inhale, exhale, exhale, shoot, it's a normal breathing cycle, but they shoot, bidding, 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 bidding. they need to breathe differently. So they need to find a way how it works for them that they are not out of breath after five no, minutes. No, no, again, again, the thing comes on comfort. Yeah, exactly. What, what works. But I think you should... Like, like with all these draw techniques, you show it to them and then they find which one works for them individually. So not one has to fit all or some needs to fit all. We, we had last time in, in a group, I said it, I think in that podcast, that you normally we train first with beginner session, three finger normal. But there was one, he couldn't rotate his wrist because of an injury. So he had his wrist like this. What did my instructor say? Okay, then you directly shoot thumb release because he couldn't do this. So then he started directly thumb release. So it always what works for you. But even breathing, at least you show them what you should take care of and then leave them or they can adapt or whatever. But I think it's a, it's a crucial part. Breathing is always a crucial part in everything. And relying on... Just... It's just only when you think about it, it's a crucial part. If no, you don't and, think and, about and, it, it's No, okay. in thinking that you breathe right, it's wrong. You need to learn how to breathe. Like you need to learn how to run. Everybody thinks they know how to run. And then you see them running and they're jumping around like, like a sick games. Uh, you need to learn how to run. You need to learn how to breathe, I think. Most people need to do that. And when you see them struggling, it's simply because they didn't breathe properly. I had yeah. I had this in in when we had our range because in, they were at McDonald's before. No, we had maybe. I had this in, in in our indoor range. 
I had one guy, he's working out, you know, he had arms double the size than me. And then we had to move some stuff. And after 15 minutes, he couldn't anymore. He was exhausted. And I was like, come on, let's go, let's go. <laughs> For me, no problem. For him, it was a problem because he doesn't know how to breathe. Because this, 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 uh, how, this, this, um, how you call them, this gym guys. And so they are stupid, of course. So they I exhaust. Am- They exhaust, they exhaust themselves because they don't know how to use leverage, how to work on and so on, I think. If you want to have the muscles, it's fine, but still learn. And this is a deficiency in these gyms, I guess, in many, that they don't teach them how to breathe properly. When you see Wim Hof, I don't know if you know Wim Hof with his breathing techniques, he shows you that he lets one guy do some push-ups and he manages whatever, five, let's say. And then Wim Hof shows him his breathing technique for a minute of our tour. And then all of a sudden, this guy can do double amount of push-ups, not because he has more muscles, only because he was breathing right. Yeah, that may be true. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it, I, it. I, I don't, uh, I dislike this gym stuff because if you like to really get trained, you have to train boxing or a kind of martial art, not just lifting weights to get blown up and and i have these muscles i have from maybe from my boxing training or work Mm -hmm. or so and i don't need artificial muscles on my body i always say if you want to see the one of the most efficient fighters in my opinion was bruce lee look at him he had a nice defined body but he didn't have big muscles he didn't have big Mm -hmm. big whatever because you need to move them (laughs) it's 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 unused Wait, you need to move like like you have an English longbow, you know, with these massive limbs, and then you have a lot of you lose a lot of efficiency because his limbs need to go back. You know, that's yeah. why we have the recurve pose. They are small, snappy, fast. <laughs> oh no, he hates me again, Peter. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, let's go back to Indian archery. Oh. So we have the draw techniques, we have the breathing. What is next? You don't use quivers, or do you use quivers in your archery, or how how was it in in Because I think I saw this photo only with this belt, that you have the arrows in your belt, or how is oh, it? Weavers, weavers were uh, for the for back, back also and side also. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, so you had back quivers, side quivers. Yes. Mostly, uh, if you are uh, going to jungle, mostly the uh, archers take back quivers with them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because they have to move in the shrubs and all those forest areas, mm-hmm. so back quivers is comfortable with for them mm-hmm. okay. and during wars yes there there were quivers special quivers on chariots also mm-hmm. yeah and of on on the the foot foot soldiers foot archers they also have quivers on they have side quivers also mm-hmm. so quivers were used very well. okay. leather mm-hmm. leather and bamboo quivers were there okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. cool nice and yeah, because there is only mentioned this 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 belt where they put like like the Koreans kind of okay uh, and um, talk again about bows. So the the typical Indian style bow is a kind of composite recurved bow. Sir, uh, there are various kind of bows mentioned in Dharmaveda. Mm. There are metal bows also. There are been horn bow also that mm-hmm. is called uh, normal long bow, metal. long bow also. Mm. Mm-hmm. Long bow, mm-hmm. horn, horn bow also, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and metal bows also. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But as as you told us, that metal bows were mostly ceremonial. Yes, they were ceremonial. Mm-hmm. They are even they are given as a gift for as a golden bows made of a silver. Mm-hmm. There were mixed metals also. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that was ceremonial bows. Those were mm-hmm. ceremonial bows, not used as war bows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the bow Sir, strings uh, were made of silk or yes, silk, silk or sinew and sinew. See, yeah. silk and sinew. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. I think a, a, a sinew, a sinew uh, string is very thick. Animal, and... animal intestines. Mm-hmm. They take yeah, open yeah, yeah. animal yeah, intestines. Yeah, yeah. Then they uh, dry them and then they mix. Okay, they need to stretch yeah, 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 yeah. until they get the final length. Yeah. But they but they have to be very thick, I think, very str- thick and strong because you know that's not a lot of 
they don't keep and, a lot of and mostly uh, mostly uh, the bows were the heavyweight bows they were having silk thread also uh, very mm -hmm. much very mm -hmm. very thick or thicker one mm -hmm. i have an arrow like this uh, it is you can see yeah yeah a big mm -hmm. long yeah yeah and that's written even in Chinese archery that their their strings of the Manchu bows had whatever six, seven, eight millimeters thickness. So it's like what you shoot as an arrow, they had as a string. <laughs> yeah. So yep. Mm -hmm. But then the arrows, of course, were whatever one inch or <laughs> thick, like a thumb, yeah. like a broomstick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah nice. There are also many many people think that oh, my string is not uh, the knock is uh, very wide. It's, it is not hanging in the string and yeah, yeah, yeah. People, because people uh, take different arrows with their different kind of yeah. string. so this happens mm -hmm. they have to either they have to change their arrow or they have to make the, some knocking point on it <laughs> to mm -hmm. hold it <laughs> and but interestingly is in this book first mentioned are the arrows and then the bows so for them even the arrow was always the more important part because the arrow is the thing which kills you and not the bow. You know, the bow is only the tool. The to device. Yep. So they have way more emphasis on, on arrows and air tip shapes and whatever, what have you, you know, but... You see this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 it's in original. Yeah, wow. I only have it in the book. Wow. Yeah, you show wow. off. Wow. You. Wow. 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 I put my book now away. Okay, fine. Um, <laughs> fine, okay. And, and um, nice. what is the... In, in this book, or or maybe just Minda knows, what is the explanation explanation for this crescent, for this half moon shaped arrowhead? What were they used for? Uh, there were two kind. One to uh, amputate the limbs or mm. or uh, throat to cross mm. the throat, and one was one was smaller was to cut the string of of a uh, of the of opponent archer mm, when no. the string. When, when the string goes, then he will not be able to you can't shoot back. Yeah, exactly. But why? Why would you shoot uh, again, uh, uh, at the string of an archer if you can hit the archer? It's more you, difficult I, to I hit the string kill, than I, the archer. I don't want to kill the archer. Mm. He's my he's my fellow brother. I don't want mm. to kill him. I will I will make him handicapped. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but then he fights on with but a in, sword. In, no. In in our uh, culture in earlier times there was very much of uh, rules and regulations they, that were followed during the war time also mm -hmm. so uh, everything the rules they have, they follow very strictly mm -hmm. so so this uh, this was one of the thing it is not was that everything is fair in love and war it <laughs> war there were rules of war rules at mm -hmm. that time it was so the same archer, here yes if an archer is has to fight with archer Mm -hmm. A warrior of that level has to fight with that, mm -hmm. so not with with small soldiers. Let the small soldiers fight with each other. So mm -hmm. there, there were some in, med in in medieval time. It was t even to World War One. It was like that. So a, a, a soldier wasn't allowed to shoot an officer. Mm -hmm. I think up to World War One, mm -hmm. and in the medieval time also the 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 kind of uh, auxiliary troopers were not allowed to fight knights. Mm -hmm. They can capture them or, or, or push them off the this horse, was, but they, they weren't allowed to kill the knight mm -hmm. or a noble this was, man. This was also one of the reasons when uh, invaders come to India, they didn't follow any rules and mm -hmm. the people here were following rules. <laughs> yeah, it's a problem, yeah. But, but I, I have big doubts about not about you saying it, but because we in medieval times had this shaped, this 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 half moon shaped arrowheads too, mm -hmm. and they, in fact, they don't know. Some mm -hmm. say they were used to cut off the the tendons of the horses' yeah. uh, legs, yeah. but I don't believe it. The thing is, uh, with, imagine, with... imagine you you like to shoot at the galloping or a ho you have to be there, there behind. Were, there, were, there were two kind of uh, crescent moon kind of. Uh, yeah. One was to amputate the limbs, limbs of a person or mm -hmm. on to be hit on throat. Mm -hmm. Right. You the can... other other smaller one was to uh, uh, to uh, 
cut the, the string. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. But I don't. Uh, I'm sorry for that, but I don't mm -hmm. believe in that story. Uh, maybe they wrote it down for the. But imagine the arrow is rotating. Mm. This is what I just wanted to say. An arrow starts so, rotating. And and why not? Notice. Why not shooting that guy? With a with a warhead into the throat, why you need this kind of mm. half moon shape? It's not very logic mm. to me, at least. Because uh, actually, when it when arrow, I haven't tested it personally. Let me tell you, but uh, it is that uh, the crescent moon arrowhead it will it will it will be having a weight also it it will be not that light so mm -hmm. how arrow will how much arrow will is going to revolve and mm -hmm. what is how much the physics will take <laughs> mm -hmm. take effect so that has to be checked i am not aware of that that, that how much to do more and more his uh, living history that that would be an interesting uh, video clip i mean yep. you you put on a string mm -hmm. with a weight and you try to cut mm -hmm. it with a kind of this and i'm sure it is not easy to cut the string with not this easy. kind of i i had this explanation i have we have this reenactment groups here and i sold a few of these different fancy arrow tips and then I always told him this is then for for cutting the string like Robin Hood, you know, you you cut the string of something. But then I said, look, I don't think so. I think it's more for maybe even small game hunting or something when you you know the yeah. normal yeah. arrow. Yeah. You know, yeah. when you have this and you. And you, you I, I have one one other explanation read somewhere, and they said it was for naval warfare, so they shot into the sails. So they cut the sails, mm -hmm. and if the sails are not, if they are cut a lot, mm -hmm. the the ship is not to maneuver. Okay, you you can steer the ship as good mm -hmm. if if you have you cuts in the sails and so on. That sounds more logic because maybe if you shoot with an angle into a sail, mm -hmm. you maybe can damage and cut mm -hmm. it. But you need to shoot a lot of arrows in a sail. Yeah, yeah. Think, and why why shouldn't you shoot very, then directly very, something heavy on 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 the boat? You know, holes in, in the ground. I don't know. Those ropes are very thick, not to be cut by a single arrow. Mm. I, I have heard uh, mm. till today, <laughs> even just mean this, not very not mm. not good explanations for this kind of arrowheads. Yeah, I need to get off these arrowheads again, and then I will do some testing. Okay, <laughs> okay. This I, I like learned, this is some more, uh, I will also and, and, more and you know, uh, Jasminda, Amin and me talked in the past a lot about psychological warfare. Mm -hmm. And if you have pictures of this and you have some of these, uh, maybe you you horrify your enemy. They say, oh, if that hits me in the guts or so, oh, oh, that's horrible. Or so, you know, you don't know. Or maybe they also like ceremonial stuff. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I believe you that's the official explanation for this, but I, I, I still could see that, that another, the other way shaped around would be more efficient, even if you want to cut a string. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Even when you hit it yeah. with, with, with a slightly with a chakram, you know. You hit it but and there, you cut the string. Is, there is another another kind of uh, arrowhead also that yeah. is like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. That is also used for cutting strings. That's like a, like a chisel. Like yeah, this is I can see. And mm. the next thing is, if you like to cut the string of a bow and the archer is is in front of you, mm. so the string is behind the bow. So you have to be to the side to be mm -hmm. able to cut the string. Also, yes, at an angle. Yes, yes. Yes, that is that is not uh, for hurting a archer. That is to cut the string. So mm -hmm. archer uh, they has to take an angle on it. But uh, it's it's a, such, such a very specific use case. Then that almost doesn't. I don't yes, believe it. It's not a general thing. Mm. I don't think. It is a, but this. on the other hand, uh, just mean that I could imagine if you're hitting a drawn bow on the limb with that crescent. Mm. Maybe the bow will break. Yeah. Yes, bow, bow will it's also. It may is, be it, easier it, than it, to cut the string. Yeah. It is. It is used uh, to damage things. Uh, it is. It, mm -hmm. If it if uh, it misses the string, it will hit. Yeah. It can yeah. hit there also. Basically. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Even because many use the bow even as kind of a shield, you know, when, when incoming arrows you hide. So if you come with this and you shoot in his hand or something, then he can't hold his bow anymore and then he is done for the day. So I don't know. It's like in, in Chinese so sword fighting. Cut off, the, cut off the fingers of the bow. Yeah, exactly. Cut the fingers the bow. <laughs> can't bow anymore. You lose one archer. But you could, uh, as you say, you could do it with a chisel pointed. You yeah. could do it with the opposite yeah. shape. Easier, in know. my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Relying on this, I don't know. There are two. Uh, we will. There, were, there were two kinds of crescent. One is smaller size, just mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Other is the wider one. Yeah. So both, both must be having some different use. Mm. Or there were different sizes of people. <laughs> One big guy and small guy. For the giants, yeah. In, 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 Japan, in Japan, they have also this kind of, you know, uh, like a chisel and mm. with a V cut. They and call it the, the, uh, the gut slasher or something. Or for fish, fishing, for fishing, they said that they use them even for fishing. Because no, when you shoot no. a normal arrow through a fish, it doesn't do a lot of damage. Yeah, but but if you have something like like that, yeah. mm. uh, that the arrow will come out of the fish. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, for a fishing arrow, you need a barb, mm. uh, some kind of barb, so the fish won't slip off the arrow. If you mm. have you ever tried bow fishing, Jasminda? No, never. <laughs> I never tried. It's fun. For yeah. carp, you know, you have to feed bread into the pond, and then the carp comes and look at all these ones here. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think these are fancy. This one, I don't know. This one, I really don't see the purpose. This one, maybe, uh, Armin, maybe for 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 blazing flaming arrows, you don't know. They, yeah, they wrap something, something in, uh, maybe. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Show us your few arrow tip again. And uh, let me say one yes. more thing. Uh, imagine even in the past, there were crazy folks that just built some shit. Yeah. And you have a picture of it. And oh, what to was this for? Pick out the enemy and the enemy thinks, and oh, what are they doing? Yeah. Or just to, 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 to surprise their friends. And look what I have made kind of arrow. And say, oh, that's cool. I make one myself. I don't know. I will show you a tribal arrows. Mm -hmm. Made by tribals. Nice. Wow, this is, in, uh, it's quite long, a, huh? This is bamboo arrow. Bamboo, this is a, very well That's made. A nice looks. blade. Yeah, it is made by Bheel, Bheel tribals mm -hmm. from Rajasthan. Wow, you, and the fletching is helical, huh? Nice. Yeah, and it's a, a big head. I don't like to get one of these into my <laughs> body. <laughs> wow. This wow. And I will show you another, another, another kind of. Uh, Whoa! Ooh, now we're talking. Don't don't cut your cables off. <laughs> don't you don't, you don't your cut your string. <laughs> <laughs> now wow. you tell me, what is the use of this one? Fishing arrow. Fishing, yeah. I would say because because it's asymmetrically, but it won't matter if you shoot just short distance. So in my opinion, it's a fishing. Or maybe to shoot at short, uh, short distance at the monkey or so, so you can throw down the monkey or, I don't with, know. With, uh, with rope, with string. It yeah. goes with string. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. For yeah, fishing or can, from... You can get it like retrieve here. Yes. Whatever you or okay. uh, with string, maybe also for, for kind of birds, so they can mm -hmm. fly away with the arrow or so. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Small like game, an uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, nice, very nice. Oh, yeah, a kind of potkin for 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 armor yeah. penetration, yeah. yeah, wow, armor penetration, yeah, yeah, yeah. looks nice. very heavy, yeah. But they're all very long. What's the length of these arrows? They are 32 inches, huh? No, no, it is, it is around no, 30, 30, 30, 30 yeah. 28 this is arrow is 28 and this mm -hmm. uh, now of course you don't you don't count the tip do you count always from the bottom of the and so these are all tips with a tank so they put the tank into the bamboo and they wrap it yes yeah. it is done like that mm. pretty nice and the feathers are from which uh, which bird i think it is uh um, wait no 
no no it is uh, either it is peacock or uh, that uh, wild hen wild hen okay wild hen mm-hmm. some uh, some uh, they make from eagle also yeah 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 i i know that you know and i i i you know i i saw everything here look like this wow. then they had some flu flu yeah they had, and then they had this ones here look this is then the eagle i think but would, they all had sex yeah, interesting would uh, would bow fishing be allowed in in india for carp or something fishing is fishing is allowed fishing bow, is fish, allowed. bow fishing I with bow and arrow fishing, you yes, know i haven't I haven't seen anybody doing this. Only you, in- you have to try it. It's very nice. It's very fun. And and you know, it's very simple. You just need any kind of device. You wrap around a, a kind of braided string mm-hmm. and you put this with, you know, with some tape or it something goes, on yeah. the front of your bow and you wrap around the string and fasten it to the arrow, fix it to the arrow. It's really funny. Mm-hmm. You can have yeah, tribals. Tribals do that. Tribals here still do that. Okay. For their nice. They they do this, but uh, mm. generally I haven't seen any person doing bow fishing here. Mm-hmm. I haven't. Seen. Okay. And even we don't see that uh, people carrying bow. Then how we are to have bow fishing? Mm-hmm. Okay. Where it is not that much popular now, but it is gaining now. It is gaining. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The sport is gaining, but it is not uh, that popular. Mm-hmm. Currently, it is people are not aware the, how to uh, get knowledge about that and how to get the equipments. Mm-hmm. This, this is the problem. It is not easily available. So, mm-hmm. you know, we were we were three to four friends. We drove to a, another part of the country, and we had a big ice box with bottles of wine inside, and old bread, old rolls, you know, sandwich bread and so, and all day long we feed in bread and the carbs come and and we shot and, and you miss and then you, you have to pick out another spot where you feed again and so you can have fun all day long, drinking mm-hmm. a little, shooting a little, very nice, very nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Then I saw one thing, Jasminda. It's like, uh, how do you call any any weihe, a bogen weihe? You know, when you go in the church and how do you call the English word? Um, uh, salvation. Something, something that that for the bow. Before you use the bow, that you you bring him to a, a kind of prayer something. for the bow. A prayer no? for the bow. This is. You still do that, or is it still forgotten no, thing? No, no, no. We we do this. You we do, do this, okay? How how does it work? We, kind of like. Does it help? <laughs> Does it helps with shooting? We have to we have to give honor to our weapons or our items, sports okay. items. Okay. Mm-hmm. In the mark of respect and honor, mm-hmm. we do okay. this. And we were at sometimes there are some days when we worship them like God. Mm-hmm. Like That's what we, I like in the Sikh in, culture. Mm-hmm. That's with what incense, I like. Yeah, with incense sticks and uh, everything, we uh, do that. Mm-hmm. Okay, we do do artis, we do uh, what we say prayers for mm-hmm. them. Okay, because nice. they, they are they are our saviors. We can uh, in ancient time they they were the saviors. Yeah. Because if you know if you have those uh, things, the weapons, they will only in Sikh culture we say the weapons will save you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and you you also so you do need it to learn that. Mm-hmm. Yes, and, and you also do it to firearms. Yes, it okay. is a weapon. Mm, I love it. Weapon. Great culture. I have to get, <laughs> I have to convert to the six. <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> is it possible? But then, but then you have to stop smoking, drink, smoking and drinking. <laughs> okay, I then I, it's easier for me to, to become a six as I don't <laughs> smoke. And I, okay. you know, I, 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 I stay with smoking and drinking, but I, I, Take this this uh, this weaponry worshiping just for, <laughs> just this segment of sick I take to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Better than nothing, no. Better than nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. pick nice. your parts which works for you, and the rest you simply ignore. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
<laughs> and then how does it work? Like that. You can do it at home, or do you need to bring the weapons to a special place? Or you have a kind of no, an no, altar no. at home, a special place for your weapon? You put them there with candles and with incense sticks, and you yes, say, yes, 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 we can do that at our home also. Okay. And how often yes. do you do that? Every month, or every half year, or year? There is a there. There is uh, in in a year two times we do that. Okay, Normal, two times. Okay. Normally. There are two occasions. There are two occasions. Mm -hmm. Just like you have a Father's Day or Mother's Day. Okay. We have a Japan worship day. Mm, that's interesting. And only, of course, if there would be now some battle, then you would most probably do this worship before you go to battle or something, right? That That is there. That, that has to be done. Mm, okay. Cool. I like this. Um, how is it with firearms? Are, are, is it difficult in India to, to possess firearms or is it easy? No, it is. Uh, you have to take license for firearms. Mm -hmm. It is this, uh, many. Some boards are very much prohibited. You can have air gun, but mm -hmm. you cannot have uh, more than point two two. Okay. You uh, okay from from point two two. You have to uh, attain license. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you will get it if you like it. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 you can. Okay. It's just uh, license. If your and, police records are clean and you know everything and the, yeah. and the or, mental doctor or, said that you are okay, then you can have it. Yes, because you and, have to uh, register yourself. You have to take a license uh, yeah. and apply to the government mm -hmm. licensing authority. Mm -hmm. So they provide you license and you have to give a specific reason that why you need a weapon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. But if, but if you're in the approval a... of government authorities, then you can... Uh, have that uh, mm -hmm. your uh, gun or whatever mm -hmm. you want. Okay, um, but but if you say to you like to go to a to a rifle shooting club and do rifle shooting, so we you will get it. Then, for yes, example. that is also there. That is also there. There is uh, Indian Rifle Association also here, so mm -hmm. you can become a member of that association. Then mm -hmm. you can have uh, as a sport sportsman or sports person or the user of the you can mm -hmm. attain that also. And also handguns, also pistols and revolvers. Yes, yes, everything. And okay, okay, okay. Anything. Nice. And, and bow and arrow. And, and there is there is some restriction that how to whether you want to keep it at your home or yeah. you have to carry. It. For mm -hmm. carry, you have to uh, get a special a, permit. Yeah. Special permit and moving out of the city or state, still mm -hmm. you have to mm -hmm. apply for the special okay mm -hmm. special mm -hmm. kind of license, special mm -hmm. permit. But otherwise, you US, are not allowed. Uh, but you as a lawyer. I guess you would have no problem to get the a, a, a carry permit, no? Yeah, not not in you. No, uh, pardon. What are you saying? I said because of your profession, because you're a lawyer, and so maybe you can could be in danger for self defense. It would be easy. Even, even though even though I have to apply to and get a license for that, mm. I have to give yeah, a yeah. reason. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, have yeah. to give a reason. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then I can then I can carry. And shotguns? Yes. Shotguns? Same. Shotguns are also there. It is, yes, it is. Procedure is same. Law is same. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Once you attain the license, you have to mention that what kind of weapon you want to have. Mm -hmm. uh, that has to be mentioned in the license. Whenever mm -hmm. there is some uh, prohibitory orders by government, you have to submit your weapon in the police station. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The whole data is with police station. They mm -hmm. will come and they will uh, get your weapon okay. Safe, okay. in their safe box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the same here in Austria. Mm -hmm. well, every five years or every periodically, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. come to your place and look for your weapons and, mm -hmm. and look for the numbers on the weapons, if this yeah, is okay, okay and so on. You know what I liked? I, I don't know if you know them. Back then in India, when they did a lot of big game hunting, they had these howder pistols. You know what I mean? This big bore, sometimes double-barreled, or mm -hmm. sometimes single barrel, big bore, little, little big yeah. pistols. Yeah. So they had them as a backup when hunting tigers or so. So they had the big rifle for hunting. Kind of muzzle, muzzle, muzzle ones. Yeah. Muzzle. yeah. 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 Interesting. But but bow and arrow is completely free of any license in, in India. No, no, there is not required. Yes, but you cannot take it on a public place. In, in a braced manner. Okay. Mm -hmm. You cannot yeah. take. Of course, heads, that's normal. Yeah. But because here in Malta, more than 60 pounds, you need to have a gun license if you want to shoot more than 60 pounds. 
luckily they don't know the law properly so i got sometimes a bow which had 50 pounds at 28 inches but the bow drew 35 inches <laughs> and at 35 it had 65 or 70 pounds but the yeah. is, you know it's like hilarious so you could draw maybe every bow up to 60 pounds so every bow needs a license <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't know yeah crazy yeah but in in, in cyprus as example there's a limit 30 pounds Everything more than 30 pounds you need a license. So it's really so even the Olympic archers need a license because they shoot 40 pounds, maybe. Yeah, then it's I don't know if it's then with sport archery and but I guess that yeah, they need some license. But they are then organized, of course, in their in their gaps. Club, yeah. So then they get their registration over the club. Mm -hmm. But they can only use it then in the club, so not somewhere else or something. So the restrictions again. Yeah, it's I think. I think it was it was also in India that the that the British used to hunt wild pigs on horseback with very uh, slim bamboo spears with a blade in front. You ever heard about pig sticking? You were asking about uh, the lighter one, this one. Ooh, look at him! <laughs> Everything <laughs> under his feet. Uh, you, you, you. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Manipuri, just... Manipuri bamboo arrow. It is very light, very uh -huh. lightweight, and it it flies very very fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a but... good speed. It is hollow from inside. It mm -hmm. is not like Tonkin bamboo that it is not. Yes. Interesting. And is this is still an arrow. Is it already a spear or something where you throw it, with the hand? It, no, this is a shaft. Correct. Shaft, okay. This is a shaft. Mm -hmm. Wow, interesting. And what's the name of this bamboo? This is Manipuri bamboo. Manipuri, Mani... Manipuri bamboo. Manipuri. Manipuri, just, uh, Manipuri. Uh, Manipuri was from James Bond. Sorry, <laughs> Manipuri. Manipuri. Manipuri is a state. So this is product of that state. It grows okay. there. From Manipuri, okay. Yes, mm -hmm. but, uh, it is one of the best uh, bamboos around the world. If you see, if, I will, I will send you some. I just to wanted to say, I wonder why nobody ever sent me, <laughs> I don't know, because I like already this Tonkin bamboo you mentioned, you can have them up to 36 inches without any nodes in it. You know, they're, they're completely, no, they look like a carbon shaft or something, but they, they're complete, no, it's bamboo. They're hilarious. We have, here. Nodes. We have nodes here. You have nodes, yeah? We, yes, we have nodes, but uh, we have uh, such, some bamboos, they, they are not having any node or mm -hmm. uh, they, have, they are having only single node. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. it and lightweight is always good because bamboo usually when you get it it's always very heavy so you only can shoot it with heavy poundage it is it is hollow from inside and spine mm -hmm. is good so wow. it works very well mm -hmm. what's the spine <laughs> you have a spine uh, tester <laughs> you don't yes, have I a spine you have a spine tester okay look from at Harsum. him yes everything <laughs> nice I got it from Indonesia from Harsum Harsum okay it's, it's a good one huh? yes <laughs> yeah nice see my reviews they sell how they make business with my reviews it's interesting yeah <laughs> <laughs> truly truly <laughs> mm. they could support me a bit more but it's fine <laughs> and, um, and i'm happy when i can help someone I mean, when they really do something nice and you see that arsum is really putting his heart into his work and he's listening because he made then these two arrow rests and i said look it's okay for 28 inch long arrows but usually we shoot longer arrows. And then when I put the arrow center that I want to see the FOC directly, then the feather is in the way. What did he mm -hmm. do instantly? He 3D printed a different uh, holder there where you can put one feather inside. So it, uh, yes. Perfect. One feather goes inside. And now he made a new one, a short one, short version. He will send it to me soon. And he really listens. I said, listen, now put a battery in it, do this and do that. Yeah, 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 we do it. <laughs> wow, nice. That is how the things improves. Yeah, this, I like this, you know, and then you see he's really passionate about what he's doing and you see how he packs it and how he ships it. And, you know, he has his heart in his job. And I like, I like to support people like this. That's why. Yes. So, Jasmine, this, so how often do you gather with your archery friends or with your society or club once a week or every once a month or how, how you often you have a, your training sessions or sir i uh, first of all i do my my own practice mm -hmm. right secondly uh, i have been called to have some camps also mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are, at least there 
people gather there at least 200 300 people wow. they come they they haven't they never touched any bow and arrow wow. so i so i take my all bows and arrows with me mm-hmm. and to show them so that they can get an experience and they get yeah. if they get involved in that is my purpose is served Mm-hmm. So, nice. so th- mm-hmm. this is how I am going. I am reviving archery. I am making people get aware about what, how to feel a bow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They Very have never touched a bow. Very nice. Yeah. First of all, they have and... to feel it. Mm-hmm. Then, exactly. then, then they know. And I am not going to. I cannot teach them in two days, two days camp. But yeah. yes, I can give them an experience that how to shoot yeah. a bow. Exactly. How you feel? Impression. What, what, what you feel? when mm-hmm. an arrow goes from when you release the arrow yeah. and how you feel yeah. how you touch the bow how is the grip mm-hmm. that all these things is fa- fac- they are fascinating and this is how the people will uh, obviously if they will have an ex- lifetime experience this yes i have i have used that bow i have touched a bow exactly yeah so yeah. somewhere if if they will slowly not now they will do archery after some time because mm-hmm. this is they have got an experience they have got a touch Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. exactly very good and so and, that i'm i'm doing and some people are organizing camps and they are calling me mm-hmm. and i'm i really love to show all those things mm-hmm. uh, bows arrows and the teaching the thing whatever i know i should everything. distribute it among the people very so good that, mm-hmm. uh, so that the knowledge should not die it it should not go with me it mm-hmm. should be there because the reason is that let me tell you the setup of society our uh, it is a uh, one guru who has 10 10 kinds of knowledge okay mm-hmm. here what we say the a guru will take one knowledge with him and he teaches nine kind of uh, lessons to his people mm-hmm. to his learner then yeah. what happens so that he will not he should not challenge him at any point of time Mm-hmm. that if if his yeah. uh, his student will challenge him then he can kill him or whatever he will exactly. they, it, it should he should have an upper hand mm-hmm. so what happens then if a person is having 10 kind of knowledge yeah he dis, he he gave nine kind of knowledge to and one his, he takes with him yeah one he keeps with him and it goes with him yeah. okay when he dies he ta- it is it, it is gone or mm-hmm. he teaches that knowledge to his son Mm-hmm. or is done mm-hmm. okay. okay now what happened the the person who has taken nine kind of lessons he will keep one mm-hmm. and then to his next generation eight, yeah. there will be eight and yeah. slowly gradually and the last person was having one and it yeah. also went nothing, yeah. nothing <laughs> yeah. so this happens due to the personal nature of uh, of a person mm-hmm. human mm-hmm. nature it is human nature for his safety he has not given the knowledge mm-hmm. but because mm-hmm. he was uh, he was uh, fearing that some day some days uh, people will come and challenge him mm-hmm. the student will challenge him so but he should this, but on the other side he should be proud you know i'm always proud if i teach someone and he is really dedicated and he gets better than me then is it oh now you're angry because i said no i you could make me not more proud than when you you learn from me and i give you only the start and then you develop your own and you get so good at it i'm you can't make me more proud yeah so that's why you can be happy no, I'm, can... I'm, i'm talking about that how the things were perished yep in india yes. in india how the things were yep. perished of course because because they kept one knowledge with them and mm. everybody kept one one kind of knowledge with yeah, them yeah. Of and course, slowly gets with, lost uh, it was lost mhm this is this yeah i understand and um, i and just me then so you go to different places over india with this yes. kind of schools mm-hmm. yes yes yeah. mm-hmm. and and every kind of class or social group yes, yes. there is no join, no, joins in no. No, okay. everybody is equal for me. No segregation. Nothing yeah. about anything. Very nice. Great. Yeah. So it also connects people. Mm-hmm. Because... R three is for all. R three is for all. Yeah. What I think. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Me too. Yeah. yeah. That's why we do this. <laughs> what we are doing. That's yeah. why. Yeah. Nice. 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 And how nice. often do you practice and by yourself? Yeah. Daily. Daily. Okay. Daily four hundred arrows at least. 
400 oh, euros every day. You must wow. have a lot of time. I, I have the wrong job. You know, I should be a lawyer. <laughs> Very no, good. I, I take it in the morning or after I come from my work, then mm -hmm. I do this. Oh, nice. And what Maybe. what distance you should you're shooting most time? What range? Depends upon how much time I have got. Uh, if I I have more time, then I go to range. Or otherwise, mm -hmm. I take in. Uh, I also you do archery in my home at my home. It is around okay. uh, twelve meters. I have got a space of twelve meters. I do there also. Sometimes I go to nearby park. There mm -hmm. I do. That is uh, I can do up to thirty or. 40 meters mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. in into my room also i have a, made the setup that is only mm -hmm. uh, 10 feet ah, so, that's for, so, for right. practicing yeah, yeah just for the form yep yes so i have i have made segre <laughs> i have segregated my uh, archery system he's really dedicated huh? <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and 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 your your husband your your wife is is happy because you're shooting in your living room, no? <laughs> yeah. I, I I also told her to uh, do some archery. She has broken one glass, so after that she stopped. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit. <laughs> yeah, that can happen, you know. Nice, nice. interesting. Yeah. Mm hmm. Well done. A lot of information today. I hope our viewers are happy today that we were talking a lot about archery, not about politics and whatever. Hmm? So let yeah, us know I in the hope, comments. I hope so, yeah. yeah. But I think it's, it's still more to come, so we need to invite you another time. We already have two hours. I will show, oh. a, I will show you a picture. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is... Uh, I, this I made in when I was uh, 12 or 13 years old. Wow! Wow! Okay. And that time I uh, I didn't knew that I will become an archer. So this was. I uh, can see. I yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the form is a little off, but it looks very good. Very good. Nice. <laughs> Beautiful. You are an Beautiful. artist, huh? Yeah. Pretty. Yes, I love to draw. Yeah. Oh, very good. You know, like that old samurais, they have to be artists, they have to do yeah. calligraphies and mm -hmm. carving and something, and right. also wear warriors yeah. and have to write poems and, and mm -hmm. something. And mm -hmm. so that's a kind of nice but it, art always clean your heart. Exactly. Yeah. Art cleans your heart. That's why it's art. Yeah. That's yeah. why in the word heart is the word art. Because yeah, yeah. Art. yeah. <laughs> Art <laughs> and, <I do. laughs> yeah. and it gives you self confidence, it gives you a good feeling. Yeah. I, I can paint this or I can do this, and, and mm. you, you're a different person when you go away from your painting or your what mm. you're crafting or doing. You're a different person every time you do it, you every, every time you get a better uh, mm. person, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I think when he sends me these arrow shafts, I get a painting too. <laughs> he will get the he will get a better person if he sends you some shafts. Armin, Armin is very good photographer. Also, I have seen his uh, photo. This is my way yeah, of expressing yeah, my art. Yeah, yes, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, nice. But you have to do something. You know, you need to clean your heart all the time. You know, and and uh, I always love love to look on Armin's photographs, and you know. You have to have you have to see the picture yeah. in the world. Yeah. You have to see the frame of the picture. That would be a nice picture. Or that yeah. is a nice most people don't know that and they simply yeah. where, where did you take this photo? I said, Yeah, here directly around the corner. Yeah, I never saw that. Yeah. Said, yeah, because you and this is what I like on photography, you go different through the world. Because you, you perceive the world differently. You're not so, oh, what problems? You simply walk and you light shadows, yeah, yeah. oceans, whatever. You, you look, look at that heaven, look at that tree look, or so. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I like photography. And, then, yeah. Yeah. and you always Earlier, find the picture. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You always find something. Let, let me tell you one, time, one thing that uh, I was not having good fletch, fletchings for my arrows. So I used to see on the ground, on the parks, whether I can find some uh, feathers, yeah. feathers, mm -hmm. yes. And I found a lot of feathers earlier. <laughs> I was not aware that there were feathers also falling on grounds. 
<laughs> see? Yeah. So when we see the things differently, yeah. Yeah. what, what we need, then we mm-hmm. can find it. Otherwise, yeah. if, you, if, if you are running with closed eyes, you cannot see anything. Yeah, you don't see. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have to sharpen your view yeah. for, yes. for, yes. for things. Okay. Yes, yeah. yes if, you, if you see in a focused way, yes, I am looking for this thing. And <laughs> then you will look at, your eye will go there only. Yeah. And you will see, hey, the world is full of feathers. <laughs> I never saw them before, but now it's full yeah. of feathers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting, yeah. Mm. This is how we aim, we see to our target. Yeah. And, yeah. and we attain Very it. Very good. What a, what a nice word for the end of this podcast. Huh? Oh, yeah. Shall we leave it like this? Or you want to make another of your jokes, Peter? No. Yes, uh, uh, Jasminda, I think we have to send over our bows and arrows for your ceremony. Maybe we get yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. So you, welcome. So, you are most welcome. <laughs> but I think it's cheaper when we fly Jasminda here. <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> and I do the... my bows over there. It takes a, a plane by itself. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We will make sure, a kind of like weaponry it. shrine and then maybe make a ceremony. And now we, we, every... hire, we hire a big local hall and then we put all the bows on the yeah, ground yeah, and then yeah, you yeah, can yeah. come with some incense sticks and run around. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that could help. That could yeah. help. Yeah, and yeah. maybe I get that a better archer then. Yeah. <laughs> the last hope. The last oh, hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing works here, yeah, of course. <laughs> I should like crap, so please give me my give me my answer for my bow. Yeah, but I have to excuse. We are don't making fun about your religion. Oh, no, completely, it's just not. a joke. Okay, I, I hope I, you I understand really, it because I like these things. I yeah, like that yeah. you. It's it's not yeah. worshiping in a bed where you really respect your weapon, and this is what I tell the yeah. people always when they drop their bow on the floor. I said, "Look, this is your weapon." Of course, nowadays, not anymore, but your life relies on this. So you need to treat it with the respect it deserves. Yeah. And that's why this is for me. That's why I like this idea, even having yeah. this, you know, you do a series, you get a different bonding between yourself and the bow. It's even def- at the time of practice, we, yeah. uh, before starting the practice, we bow to our bow, before yeah. our bow. Yeah. And then we start practice, we bow to our target also. Yeah, makes before. sense. Yeah. Yeah. The pole, the target, and that, and after the practice again. In yeah. the starting and after the practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And these are these are the tools uh, which decide between death and life. Yeah. You know, Sir, this you, is, de- this you is depend what, on them. This is, yeah. this is how if you will respect something, yeah. that thing will also respect you in yeah. one and another way. Yeah, and will serve you in the yeah. critical situation. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good thing, good thing. Yeah. So, a bit more respect, people, for your bows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's, it's an easy thing. You, you only need to have this mindset or realize that it exists too. You know, it's of course a different dimension and whatever. It is esoteric and you can believe it or not, but it helps you connect with your bow. You know, I, I like to, because Armin knows I'm not religious and I'm not a, an esoteric. But in a in a different way, I'm an esoteric because mm. I tell you an example. If I have a very well made bow made by a master bowyer, I can't put it into the same bow bag with a poor made, let's say, mm. uh, Henry Botnik bow or something. Snake bow, the snake bow. <laughs> yes. You know, that's also mm-hmm. kind of religious and Part esoteric of- because mm-hmm. you think this is a, a highly mm-hmm. uh, a, a, a valued and nice weapon and this is just just some weapon. So I don't I, put them together into one also. I, I have them all in the same box and in the same bag. <laughs> me not, me not. <laughs> I'm a, for me, the bow is the bow. No, I'm and, an esoteric in that manner. No, no, so, but it's, you know, and it depends on my life. It doesn't matter. Then it's the bow I have in my hands. If it's the Botnik bow, if it's the other it's, bow. It's the respect I have for the bow maker. Mm, yeah. Okay. I can't is, put the sim- a, okay. a, 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 a low value, just mm-hmm. mass no, no, produced. Factory, factory, factory made is different. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. Different. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So for I the can't. Bow maker. Then, I, yeah, I can't put mm-hmm. them together into okay. one bag because mm-hmm. I have to honor the bow maker. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. Understood.
it's also esoteric. Of, of course. course. Yeah, because it doesn't matter if you put them in one bag, but <laughs> I don't do it. <laughs> as long as you feel better, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Same mm. as that what I am showing also on my uh, uh, on my channel that when a bow comes to me, I am describing the about the bow maker also, mm -hmm. so that so that it is one of one the labor or his art he has given in his bow, mm -hmm. is yeah. put in in his bow. And mm -hmm. that should be, uh, people should know about it. Mm -hmm. It should be given proper uh, credit. It should mm -hmm. be given yep. credit. A bow maker has to be given credit because because of him, we are doing good archery. We are getting a good experience. We are getting mm -hmm. a good weapon. Mm -hmm. yeah, and sure. he's, yep. uh, it is, they are to be honored. Secondly, the people here in India, they should also know that how, what kind of effort is now being uh, put in by the bow makers mm -hmm. and they can also take they can also uh, replicate that thing mm -hmm. so, yeah. mm -hmm. that's true so that because our uh, bow making techniques and our bow makers bowers are not uh, now they are not living now mm -hmm. they are perished so for to revive their dna so th these things are has to be shown mm -hmm. so, i understand i do, mm -hmm. I do that mm -hmm. very good very good mm -hmm. On the other hand, I have to mention not every bow maker is a saint. <laughs> That's also true. <laughs> That's true. He's like a maker. And, and not every archer is bow maker, nor bow maker is a good archer. It is yeah. not true. Yeah, 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 true. yeah, 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 true. yeah. True, yeah, true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. What yeah. you say. Yeah, fine. And you know, what is 100% true, and I, I saw it in some bows, you know, you have to be a good friend with a good bow maker, so he makes you the best bow he can, because most bow makers, of course, are working on the safe side, so the bow won't break or they don't get any, you know, reclamations and 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 problems and issues with the bow. So they tend to overbuild the bow in some way, and just a bow maker who is a very good friend to you, who is sure you will walk to him if the bow breaks and you will say, look, maybe we can work it out. And so he will make a good bow, a very mm. narrow, a very, you know, fragile bow because the old guys like Sexton Pope. And so they said in full draw, a good bow is seven eighths broken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. So to... it's it's not it's not too much wood on the bow or too much mm -hmm. sinew or I don't know, and and so every bow who which will not break if you overdraw it mm -hmm. is not a very good bow because yeah. it's too much material mm -hmm. on the limbs yeah. and that's mm -hmm. what I mean with that and you okay. have to know a bow maker very well so he makes mm -hmm. the, and if the bow breaks it's no problem for me but I want the best bow you can make of course yeah I understand yeah. And yeah, nowadays people are very much uh, they are thinking of long draw. Mm. I have to draw. Many people ask me, how long can I draw? Then mm. uh, I ask them, what is the purpose of your yeah. of long draw? Do you need? Do you require? And yeah. do you have those long arrows with you? Mm. <laughs> if you thank don't, thank you, have... thank you. Because we always fighting. I say, what is the advance of a longer draw? That the I arrow stays longer in contact yeah, with yeah. the string and can get yeah. more kinetic yeah. energy. Yeah, yeah. Physics. Of course. Yeah. It, uh, when you push a car, you know, you, your car stopped and you push him for five seconds, does it roll the same way as if you push it for 20 seconds? Yeah, but you have a kind of peak in every bow draw curve. So mm -hmm. it pushes not not 32 inches. It pushes not 32 inches. It pushes one peak and and so on you know yes but longer yeah. time is a factor too not only the the, the amount of the yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i like always to say when i know that somebody builds a bow for me i always wish them only that he goes to work when he's in a positive mood and in his best mood and he shall work on my bow if he feels bad or if there is something, please don't work on my bow. That only the best energy of this bow builder goes into my bow. Esoteric. Guy. Of course. <laughs> hey, welcome to the club, Peter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
who separates the bows huh? here, Peter? <laughs> and he has to fasten for two weeks before no, 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 he starts no, no. to fine, starts fine. to make his bow and has oh. to live in a cave somewhere in the mountains. It would and... be beneficial yeah, for some. <laughs> it would help. <laughs> Maybe I should go in a mountain. Bow, uh, means you, a bow maker should make a, his bow with a very healthy mind. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. That's true. That's true. Not only thinking, okay, I need to make this bow now, that he really, he's happy. I, make, he I have it. to make this yeah, shit yeah. bow for this shit customer. Yeah, this <laughs> then he will make a review and then I will look yeah. bad and whatever. Oh, <laughs> fuck. Well, sometimes they will, they will say, nah, this customer is not going to give me much money about the bow. So let me uh, make. But, but it is, a bow maker has to be, to realize that whatever he is making is going to some hands and he will be renowned by the, that with his work exactly if a person is not getting good bow mm -hmm. even if he has paid less or high but yeah. a person is saying that but uh, this bow is a crap now mm -hmm. so that is, what is the use of making that bow yeah exactly and 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 you know this with this overbuilt bows on the safe side on the safer side for the mm -hmm. bowyer it's especially true with this kind of self, wooden self bows and so on, mm. because you uh, the kind of composite bow, I think you can make it very nice so you, it won't break in any case. But a wooden bow, that's a different thing. If mm -hmm. you need a really good wooden bow, a well-performing wooden bow, you have to know the bow, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where also, and uh, all the natural bows about what we draw there we have to give some uh, flying release on it because uh, you get more energy and speed uh, on a flying release on natural bows mm -hmm. like fly release. This is flying, flying release video. flying anchor okay yeah. Yeah. Because, you... because some bow builders yeah. even tell me when i have a an, an one piece longbow on on my tiller stock and i measure the poundage and i hook the bow in and show the curves. Oh, you can't do this because you will damage the bow. You and break they say, it in, yeah. oh, and in the moment you start holding it, it loses already energy. Yeah. So but that's it's true. Flying anchor, of course. Yeah. For for complete self bows, yeah. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I, with my shooting style, I also immediately release yeah, when I'm here. So you don't hold the bow no. with my style, at least, yeah. of shooting. Half a second, maybe. Not even. Because some people who hold the natural bow, either the bow will one time one or other day it will break yeah. or uh, or it will lose the energy yeah exactly yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah 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 yep. and that and that's we talked about before compared to a kind of self wooden self bow a composite bow is a kind of highly highly sophisticated item tool because uh, if you keep it, you if you take care for it, you can keep it and you can give it to your son if you take care mm. for it. But a wooden bow always will get damaged or break and or or yeah. weak and and something like that. So that's a big step in in bow yes. development. That's true. My opinion. True. But on the other side, of course, these simple long bows are easy to make and you can make a lot yeah. of them so and yeah. when you, yeah. when you the, equip your army the other side. for one yeah. battle with one set of new bows for the next battle they get new bows so it's yeah, yeah. you don't have to care about the bows and you simply throw them away and get them new ones that's why i think these these high sophisticated uh, uh composite bows they were not too common in infantry men or so. I think just mm -hmm. the nobles and, and the big guys had them. And, and the, the, sing, the simple infantry men had maybe stick bows, you know, self bows. I think so. I think it depends on the material they got. When you see in Mongolia, there are not many trees growing. So where do they get the material? They couldn't. I mean, I mean. Uh, Genghis Khan's Mongolian Empire was, you well, know, from enough, Russia yeah. to <laughs> Vienna. But it, so, had, but it had to become that big. So in the beginning, it wasn't. Yes. Okay. So and he didn't use a user, user, whatever. Or if uh, I always say in my archery lessons, when I show that short uh, uh, Korean bow or, or something, mm -hmm. I say also it depends on how you live. If you're on horseback or mm -hmm. or on in a canoe like the Eskimos or the Inuit, you can't use a long bow in a, not so easy in a mm -hmm. canoe or in a in a kayak mm -hmm. like like a short bow yeah. and so obviously yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. Your famous last words for today. What would you tell everybody who wants to start archery in one sentence? 
Some yeah. some comments we simply don't answer because it's not <laughs> like and I'm subscribe sorry. subscribe yes, also to Jasmine's channel. Yes. And I left I left the link in the description, so yeah. please give him show him some love, like him and look oh, at his Instagram. One more thing, whatever. one more interesting YouTube thing. Have you noticed they put away the dislike numbers? Yes, you don't see how many dislikes yeah. you get anymore. Yeah. yeah, you know why they did it? Yeah, because I never get dislikes, so they didn't do it. <laughs> no, you know why. Because no? if there was some some speech of Angela Merkel or something, yeah. you see six thousand dislikes yeah, and four hundred yeah. likes, and they don't like if mm -hmm. the person yeah. should see what only hundred likes and five thousand dislikes. They I don't want to yeah. show that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, <laughs> of yeah. Course. So they want to hide the real opinion of the viewers. Yeah. That's the real. Yes. Yeah, that's what good that you mentioned it. Now I need, to, of course, to talk to Bo Krause, my special friend. So even if you send me now dislikes, nobody will see it anyway anymore. Yeah. So it doesn't make sense to give me thumbs down. So better give thumbs up, makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah. And we still only all shoot bow and arrow, even you, Bo. Yeah. Bono Bo. Bo, Bo, Bo knows bows. Bono Bo's. Bono Bo knows bows. <laughs> Bo with his nose, knows bows. Uh, okay, those... now we're coming to crap, so we should stop. Okay, thank you very much, Jasmine. Goodbye, was really sir. Nice to have Goodbye, you back on our show. Really appreciate Goodbye. it, and I appreciate Love your it. knowledge, and I appreciate what you do in India. Yeah, that you really open up people for this. In it's you know, and you. The thing is, people need to shoot once a bow and arrow that they feel it. You can't explain it. They need to have this experience once, and then it's you know. Yeah, but you you both thing. know it. Uh, yep. It is the syncness, syncness with your bow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get in sync with your bow. That's exactly. This is yeah. such a, this experience is just, and you connect directly to all your ancestors and, and whatever. So, and then to the, to the female warriors, if you are, whatever, <laughs> everything works. I don't know how, I don't know how much time will take in India now again to revive it. But once the person who has touched the bow felt he has that feeling. He will tell his son or daughter, exactly. yes, I have, I, I have, I have touched this weapon. Exactly. At least from when, who, mm. who, who told you, how you get into it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Then I, then, then this was, then I am honored. <laughs> yeah, then you are yeah. already honored. So don't worry. You do really he's, a good job. He's there. a big guru over there. I see. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, a yeah. big guru over there. <laughs> but he deserves it. It's fine. Fully yeah. deserved. Okay. 
Nice. Thank you for today. Thank you very much for watching, subscribing, and everything else.